Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part three of the spray painting procedure on this Volvo XC60. So the first video was a 20 minute one. We went right through all the prep work and the second video was masking and now we're gonna get right into the spray painting. So we're picking right up where we left off in the previous video. So the color code is 717 as you can see there on screen and the name of the color is Onyx Black. It's actually a pretty cool color when you get this one into the sun. It's got some nice pearls in it and it really pops out there in the sun. It's like a, a nice deep clean black. Like a lot of the blacks these days, they'll put way too much white in there and just it makes them go like really milky. Uh, for whatever reason they do that, but this one's a very nice clean black. Uh, it does kind of look like a solid color when it's in the shade, but once you get it out into the sun, uh, it's those micas and the pearls really pop. So obviously what we were just doing then was wiping all the panels down with waterborne cleaner. So as I mentioned in the prep work video, what I do these days is I'll prep the whole car up and then I'll use my wax and grease remover or prep sole. So I'll wipe the whole thing down with prep sole before I mask it. And then after I mask it, I'll wipe it down with water cleaner. That's something that I've started doing now that I'm using waterborne paint. So the paint system I'm using here is Stando Blue and that is a waterborne uh, base coat. So the clear coat's still two pack. Your primers are still two pack. However, you can still use some certain approved 1K etch primers. But yeah, most of the time we'll use our two pack primer over the filler repair and then we'll still put our two pack clear coat over the top of the waterborne base coat but it's just sort of, yeah, just the color itself is the waterborne part. And don't confuse it with full water base paint. So water base paint is the stuff that you probably used when you're a kid, when you were doing paintings in primary school. Now that stuff will always wash off with water, no matter how long down the track. Like you could come back to it in a year, grab some water and it'll wash it off. Whereas this stuff here is waterborne. So you think of the water as like a vehicle. It actually still does have around 12% solvent, I'm told, in this stuff. So once it's dry, water will not actually touch it. I think it's important to understand the specifications and you know the properties of the materials and the products that you are using. It's a kind of thing that understanding the products better will help you troubleshoot issues that you might have. Like if you understand sort of all the ins and the outs of the product, then you're going to be able to troubleshoot. When you do have an issue, you'll be able to identify the problem and then uh, adjust your methods or procedures to make sure that you don't get that uh, same issue going forward. So yeah, onto the spray painting. So the gun that I'm using is one of the best guns in the world. It's still got my number one on my top 10 spray guns list. And that is the Devilvis GTI Pro Lite. This one here is the Gunman Edition. As you probably saw on screen, the setup is TE20 and the fluid tip size is 1.3. So a bit of a favorite of mine, a good all rounder, you know, something that's uh, efficient, but will still get a nice amount of material on it. It, it, it repl replicates those OEM finishes pretty well, I've found anyway. So what you might have noticed I did when I was spraying the water base on this car was I did that blend first and then I came back to the door and then put my first coat on the door now I'm putting the second coat on the door look at the end of the day this is a black you can spray this pretty much however you want it's not really going to make that much of a difference I mean you might get a very slight difference in the way that the metallic stands up but um, in saying all that yeah pretty much spray blacks however you will it's more so like the light metallics and the silvers and golds and stuff like that whereas um, you might want to move a little bit faster or even use like a, a slower thinner in it or something like that because basically the worst thing that can happen when you are spraying this system here the Stando Blue or Spees Hecker High Tech or even the uh, Chromax Pro so those three systems are exactly the same so yeah if you are using any of those systems know that you are using the same paint as me but basically the worst thing that can happen is your first coat dry before you put your second coat on now, in this ins instance, as I say, it's a dark enough color that you really wouldn't notice it anyway. I didn't even use any blender. You might have even noticed that. I didn't actually use any base coat blender because it's not really necessary at all when you're spraying blacks or really dark colors like this. And I actually recommend against using it. The paint reps here in Australia have all told me, don't even worry about using it at all on the darker colors. So yeah, look, I found it works totally fine. And I mean, I didn't really need them to tell me. I never used to use it on uh, most of the dark colors with solvent based anyway 
the only reason I would use it sometimes is to stop like the um, the base coat going a little bit uh, dry and dusty on your blend panel. So that's one other thing to keep in mind if you ever do do your darker colors with this paint system without the blender. Just make sure you do give those blends a good tack rag down because as I say, you can end up with some sort of a sand pit. That's what I call it anyway. Um, basically where your own overspray has dried and then landed on your blend. And um, yeah, once you go to clear over that, it can end up with like heaps of tiny little bits of dust in the finish. So the clear coat I'm gonna be using in this video is the same as I usually use, uh, and that's the Standock Standard Clear. It's pretty good clear for the price. It is the cheapest Standock branded clear you can get. It's identical to the Chromax Chroma Clear for anyone who is using the Chromax paint system. And yeah, look, for what it is, it's great. Like, it's a good high gloss to it, easy to use. It's a hybrid clear, they tell me. So it's like halfway between a MS and a HS. And you can actually look up all that information. If you get the technical data sheet on just about any product, there will be like a solid content in that product. So I did look it up once or twice and I think it's something like, don't quote me on this, but it's something like say three or 400 grams per litre of solid content in your medium solids. And then when you go up to your high solids, it's around like five or 550. So basically like the rest of uh, what's in there, like that's around half of your clear coat is solid content basically. Um, uh, in your, your high solids, but then when you go to your medium solids, it, it's around your three or 400 grams, so like 30 or 40% uh, solid content. So obviously the high solids clears are gonna be better for the environment because you need to put less material on, like less coats on and less amount of that clear coat on to achieve the same film build. The other side of it is that you'll be um, left with a superior gloss most of the time I've found, but the only real downside, it's not quite as easy to use. Like for those who aren't uh, used to using the thicker clears, it can be a little bit tricky to get the hang of uh, holding that gun so close, cranking that pressure up to yeah, like 30 PSI, and um, yeah, it, that's the main thing, just holding it nice and close and moving nice and quick. But as I say, this clear coat I'm using here, it's not actually a full HS anyway, but it's it's not an MS, so it's, it's I can't uh, remember exactly what it was because I don't usually read the material safety data sheets, I just whack the clear in the gun and I'll know when I'm stirring it in the pot if it's too thick or if it's too thin. Like one thing that you can do if you're in the colder climates, and I have actually done a video on it, but. I know that not everyone's seen all of my videos, but yeah, just try and warm your clear coat up if you can. I put it in the microwave, it sounds crazy, but it works, you know. I had this old microwave at home, and I just took it into work, and I'll give like two or three hundred mils, maybe 30 seconds, so a small amount, obviously. Look, if you put it, if you've got like a full liter clear, you know, you might want to go a minute. But I've got one of those little digital thermometers, one of the ones that everyone's probably been tested with every time you go into the shopping center these days. Um, but yeah, you can get them on eBay. You, well, you used to be able to for $15. I'm sure they've gone up in price now through the higher demand uh, because of recent things that have happened in the world. Um, I can't even talk about it or else your videos get demonetized. That's what I've seen some people have happen anyway. But that aside, basically, you want to go for a clear coat temperature of, I don't know, 25 to 30 degrees. I've gone too far with it once, right? I did this Mustang when I had my own workshop it, and I've got the clear up to like 60 degrees, and it sprayed fine, don't get me wrong. But I've, I've, like, I put the first coat of clear on, and then I'm like, oh, I'll just give it five minutes in between clear, and I came back, and yeah, like it was going hard in the gun. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but um, yeah, so just be careful. Don't go over the top with heating up your clear. Um, I don't know, I'm one of those guys that likes to push the limits of my materials, and I don't know, I think it just uh, helps you understand them a little bit more too. I get a lot of people sometimes, they're like, oh man, you're a killer spray painter, you know, you're doing really well, and they're like, oh, you're a natural, and stuff like that, and look, I just wanted to say that, like, it, this is learnt, it's all learnt. I wasn't born a great spray painter, obviously. Um, I, I think my my dad taught me a good work ethic from a young age, and I've always enjoyed work, so that helps, but the other side of it is, you know, it's all learnt. You can learn this trade, 
Um, and look, I've made a lot of mistakes and that's the best way to learn at the end of the day, isn't it? Hey, wow, I made it up to the end. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to gas bag the entire way through this video. I'm doing pretty well. I've only had one coffee today, so I'll have to have another one and we'll edit another video up for you guys for next week. So, hope you've enjoyed watching this video and if you did, give it a big thumbs up for us and don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not already. And we'll have a look at this car out there in the detailing bay once it's all finished off, if you hang around for a minute. Jack it up. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality collab branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as I say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.